Hello everybody, welcome back to Miss B's Plan B. It's lovely to see you, I hope that you're well. I wonder if looking around you can guess the theme for my story today. Hmm. Some clues. I've got my school jumper on again. My school friends are here with me. You might spot something slightly different though. Yeah, some of you are pointing. We have a knit comb, because today's story is set in school and there are knits about. So, I'm going to challenge you to try and listen to the story without scritching and scratching because often when people just mention knits, it can make you feel a bit itchy. It's a bit like when someone says, try and eat a donut without licking your lips. The first thing you want to do is lick your lips. So, here we go. See if you can try and listen to the story without having a scritch and a scratch. Because the story is called Scritch and Scratch by Miriam Moss and illustrated by Delphine Durand. One day, a tiny insect, no bigger than a small freckle, climbed into Miss Calypso's classroom. Nobody noticed. Can you spot it down there? Miss Calypso went on calling the register. Ruby undid Polly's plait. Joshua drew on Winston's back. And Simon trimmed Karen's fringe. The little mouse had no wings, but she had six strong legs and she climbed straight into the spelling ship hanging above Miss Calypso's head. And there's the spelling ship with all the words they're learning on it and there's the little louse. What a wonderful view! Miss Calypso's cascading curls, short crops, matted mops, tufty tops, plaits, pigtails, ponytails, even a frizzy wig on the plastic skeleton in the corner. Can you see it there? Little louse closed her eyes, held her breath and fell through the air. Whee! It didn't matter where she landed. Any head would be the perfect home. Who do you think it's going to be? And the perfect home she landed on was... Any ideas? It's Miss Calypso. The little louse got to work straight away, sticking one tiny white egg to each hair on Miss Calypso's head. She hummed a happy tune. Oh, no one knows from where I came, a knit a nibbler with no name, but watch the teacher scritch and scratch when my creepy crawly family hatch. But before long, the creepy crawly family did hatch, and they climbed into Miss Calypso's cascading curls. Scritch, scratch, went Miss Calypso, praising Polly's pirate picture. Scamper, scamper, went the tiny headlights, dancing down Polly's plait. From then on, whenever two heads touched, lots of little headlights moved home. Scritch, scratch, went Polly, playing with Ruby's hair. Scamper, scamper, went the headlights. Scritch, scratch, went Joshua, drawing on Winston's back. Scamper, scamper, went the headlights. Scritch, scratch, went Simon, trimming Karen's fringe. Scamper, scamper, went the headlights. In no time at all, the little lice had perfect homes of their very own. And that was when Mr Trout, the headmaster, strode in. May I have a word, Miss Calypso? he asked. Miss Calypso agreed to meet him in the lunch hour to discuss the scritching problem. That night, Mr Trout sent letters home to all the parents. Here it is. Dear parents, please comb special conditioner through your children's hair and make it so slippery that all the head lice slide into the bath water and float away. The next day, the conditioned and combed children returned to school. There was not a single louse in sight. They had all gone. Well, all except one. <gasps> the little louse was still on Miss Calypso. You see, Miss Calypso lived alone. She had no one to help condition and comb her hair. Ah, oh, hummed the little louse, who was now a grandmother. No one knows from where we came. We nits, we nibblers with no name. Watch the children scritch and scratch when more creepy crawly families hatch. Scritch, scratch went Miss Calypso, scamper, scamper went the head lice, and soon the whole class was scritching and scratching all over again. Oh dear, the parents don't look very happy, do they? Once again, Mr Trout went to see Miss Calypso, and there, 
In the little room where cups of tea are made, Mr Trout found himself offering to wash Miss Calypso's hair for her. That night, while Mr Trout conditioned and combed Miss Calypso's hair, they fell in love. He fell in love with her cascading curls and she fell in love with his moustache. So Mr Trout and Miss Calypso got married. And now if you look into Mrs Trout's classroom, what do you see? Mrs Trout still calls the register, Ruby still undoes Polly's plait, Joshua still draws on Winston's back and Simon still trims Karen's fringe. There's not a scritch or a scratch to be heard, but there is a faint hum from the classroom next door. Oh, no one knows from where I came, a knit a nibbler with no name, but watch the teacher scritch and scratch when my creepy crawly family hatch. And have you spotted it? There is a tiny lass that's climbed next door. Uh oh. So I hope you enjoyed that story. Did you scritch and scratch? I wonder. Just a good reminder though, this story that we should be just checking our hair. Um, and when we go to school or nursery, if you've got longer hair, make sure it's tied back and then there's less chance of it touching other people's hair because that's how it travels them crawling. So they don't jump or fly because they haven't got wings. So just try and keep your hair away from other people's. So I hope you enjoyed that story and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, goodbye.